Hi, welcome to an Oslo tutorial presentation. This is actually going to be a hands-on exercise where we'll take two different catalog lenses that will enter in two different ways into a lens file and then we'll turn it into, by changing some uh, parameters around, we'll turn it into a little telescope, a little Galilean telescope that you could uh, hold up and look through. So it's like having uh, a box of lenses and we want to select a few out of it to uh, create a little telescope, but we're going to do it in software in this case. So I start off by selecting a new lens. I'm going to pick a catalog lens here and I'm going to name this Galilean Telescope. When we go to the catalog lens, I've already got it to the Edmund catalog. But if you're not in the Edmund catalog and you're duplicating what I'm doing, you're going to want to get to the Edmund catalog. I'm going to start off and, and pick a minus 25 millimeter negative lens. And the one I'm going to pick is this one. It's got a diameter of 25 millimeters and EFL of minus 25. I could have also gone in here and typed in minus 25 and it wouldn't got, would have gotten me closer to, uh, to this specific lens. But I chose to scroll up in this case instead. I hit OK. Now I come here and if I right click, so I select the first surface, I right click and I go to insert catalog lens. This is going to insert the second lens, which will be the positive lens, and sequentially it will be in front of the negative lens. So the lens I'm actually looking for here has a diameter of 50 millimeters and an EFL of 50 millimeters. It's the last one in the list. It's EPCX32971. So if I go ahead and I accept that, now I've got two lenses in here. And if I take a look, you'll see they're on top of each other. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense at the moment. So we have to do a few things to this to make it, uh, to turn it into our little telescope. But I've got my catalog lenses in there right now. And then we're going to be able to make a, a 2x a focal magnification or 2x magnifying power Galilean telescope out of this combination. So the first thing is I'm actually, I have these backwards of the order that I want them in. I actually want the negative lens first and then I want the positive lens after that. So if I go here to the positive lens and if I select here, draw on, I apologize, this is the negative lens. If I go here to the negative lens and I cut it, then I go to the positive lens, select that, and I paste. That's going to paste. These little buttons allow me to do cut and paste types of operations. This is going to allow me to paste it above this other lens. So there, I've got that in place now. And you look at it and you say, wait a second, it's still behind. But sequentially, it's actually in front. It's because this is a negative distance here. So this was a solve that when the first catalog lens, I believe it's the first catalog lens is put in, it puts a solve on and says, where is the uh, paraxial image location? So we'll we'll fix this up in a minute. I want to try to do this in the in the right order. So if we look here, I have no solve on the back surface. So I want to put a solve at the paraxial ray height here, and that's ultimately going to be used a little bit later when I try to set the spacing. So at that point in time. I want to also insert a surface above here because I'm going to have a stop that's sitting out in front. So I'll go here and I put a little aperture stop surface in here. So now it stops out in front. Now Oslo doesn't always draw the lens uh, stop for you or the stop of the system. You have to tell it to draw the stop of the system. So if you go to lens operating conditions or UOC DRL would be a command for that and that's in the little presentation that corresponds to this. Uh, there's also, I should mention now, a lens file that shows the end result of this entire exercise that you can use for reference. If I click on this and draw aperture stop, so this was again it was under lens, lens drawing conditions, then I actually am drawing the stop. At the moment these still aren't placed in reasonable uh, positions, but I have them in the right order and I now have a stop in the system and that was pretty much what I was after along with this solve that I have on there. So the next step is to fix some spacings, but before I 
fix the spacings. I need to make sure that my parameters for my optics, for my light going into this, make some sense. So if I go to wavelength, I've just got FDC white, uh, green, blue, red. I'm pretty happy with that. This is a little visual system, so we won't change anything there. The entrance beam radius is very, very large. It was set by the program when the first lens was entered, this negative lens, and it set it so that the light beam would fill this lens. That's not really what I want here. What I'm ultimately going to want is I'm going to want to fill what's a reasonable value for someone's uh, eye pupil. So if I choose a value of five millimeters, that's actually a very, very large pupil. Uh, a lot of people's pupils don't get larger than uh, two, two and a half, three millimeters. Uh, some standard sort of sizes. Children can get all the way up to seven millimeters in diameter. And uh, there's a whole bunch of statistics behind the eye on this. This would give us a 10 millimeter size pupil. That means the eye can be put anywhere in that location where the stop is going to be and you'd be able to see through this thing. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this 15 millimeters in the front. So now I'm going to start making it look a little bit more like a, a real lens ultimately. There's still this negative space and that's why this uh, still doesn't look quite right. But it's 15 millimeters in front of this negative element and the light's going to hit that negative element first. So this is called the eye relief of it. So it just means I don't have to have my eye crammed all the way up to that negative element. It's kind of nice if you wear uh, eyeglasses and and for comfort to uh, have that extra distance. Certain kinds of systems that might recoil you know, like rifle scopes and things, people will put that kind of distance in so something doesn't you know, sort of jump into your eye or recoil into your eye. So nice um, interest beam radius and nice choice of uh, where the stop is going. So the eye is going to be placed here. So the scene is going to be out here and we're going to look through sort of right to left, but in terms of Oslo, the light's tracing from left to right as a convention. But turns out systems are reversible and it's not a big problem to set it up this way. So the next thing uh, that we're going to do is set a field of view. Right now there is no field of view, it's basically zero. We can set a five degree field of view and that's actually um, pretty large. It's going to walk the beam ultimately up on this uh, positive element. So the purpose here is to show that we can get all this light through this uh, this little telescope. So the next step um, is a little bit of a trick. So this first element, uh, sorry, this uh, second element, which is actually looks like it's the first in the drawing, this element is this positive lens. Well, I'm going to be collimated with this because this little telescope is afocal. I, my eye likes things that are far away. It likes a collimated beam and I'm looking at something far away. So effectively it's collimated on, on both sides. So um, that means the further conjugate, the further um, conjugate is going to be after it leaves the system. So I'm actually going to get a little bit better performance if I flip this around because it's allowing me to split uh, how the rays are bending between the two surfaces better if I do that. So that's just something I happen to know. And it gives me an opportunity to show you how to flip a lens in here. So here's the positive element. Here's the reverse selected rows. We flip that around. So that's how I want this set up at the moment. Uh, the next thing uh, I want to do is I want to eliminate this uh, solve on this surface. So I just eliminate that solve and I would have two choices at this point. Oh, I need to put a solve back on this because I flipped it around. I have to put the solve back on. So I put this solve back on. I'd have two choices at this point. I can manually change this number and get it set to where it would actually collimate the light coming out of the, uh, the back end of it. Or I can use the optimizer to try to do this for me and make my life a little bit easier. And that's what I'm going to choose to do here. So you can change this number manually and see if you can get the result or you can do what I'm going to set up here. So what I do at the moment is I want to make this a variable. And this is the airspace between the two elements, between the negative and the, po and the positive element. And then I go here to operands. And I'm going to choose what's called the, uh, uh, the, the PU operand. And the PU operand is effectively the angle 
that the ray that goes through the edge of the stop that's on the axial field leaves. So if that is equal to zero, then it'll be relatively collimated coming out. So that's what I do. I'm going ahead and using the green check mark here so that I have those uh, values stored. I can type in ITE and I'm so used to doing it. That's what I was doing, but I'll show you here. The iterate damp least squares optimizer can be accessed also here under optimize, or you can hit it here even on the text window. So I hit OK and I go for it. And it's actually given me a lens where this is really is collimated here and it set the spacing right. Now it looks like our little telescope configuration with the negative and the positive. You put your eye here and you'd be looking through at a scene through this and it'd be a little bit of magnification you'd be getting out of this as well. The one thing about this is if you notice this is a negative number so the rays don't quite look right and that's in practice whether this is a negative or positive number, if it's a large magnitude, it's nearly collimated. So in effect, optically, it's the same. But we don't generally like to look at things that look like that, uh, that have this type of, of picture to it. So I'm going to change this to 17.59. And that'll just make the rays look a little bit better in the example. So it's very nearly collimated. Now it's what you'd expect. Uh, light would come in here and come down to your eye. The fact that this is magnifying you can tell in two different ways. The width of this beam is smaller over here than it is here and also you have the angle here of the off-axis beam is at a bigger angle here than it is out in front and that basically means that you're getting an afocal magnification or you're getting an angular change so your eye is seeing a bigger angle for something that was a smaller angle if it was your naked eye. So that's what uh, what that looks like uh, in the end. So we went from a blank slate to a little catalog lens Galilean telescope here. The performance of this wouldn't be that great, but we effectively used two little catalog lenses and got this thing uh, set up. Oh, the one thing I didn't do in here that I do in the presentation is uh, you can type in a little name here too at some point, your little Galilean example. And I have a file that I've uh, pre-prepared on the Galilean example. Make sure I did it right. And it's got this set up. And the nice part about what I have set up is under the operands here, I've put a couple of other things in here. I've put a ratio of the focal lengths of the two lenses. And I've also put uh, the angle of the chief ray coming in here. And both of those are other ways to measure the magnifying power. So they'll both be about equal to two here. And if I go and I evaluate, it's OPE or operands, and I evaluate those, you see both of these are equal to two. And I put them with no weight. So if you optimize, these don't actually uh, change the optimization at all, but I can use them for evaluation, which is a nice little trick. So you see, I've made a little 2x Galilean telescope with a couple catalog lenses and changed a few parameters around. So please give this a chance yourself. There's a nice little presentation that has all the information in it. Thanks so much.